what is up youtube welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then hello motherfucker as you can tell by the title we have another true crime story about the ice box murders where a couple was found i don't want to tell the story in the intro anyway if you're interested to hear about this story and to watch me put together this cute little look then just keep on watching girl just keep on watching all right so charles frederick rogers was born to fred and edwina Wa fred and edwina rogers on december 30th 1921 i'm guessing that edwina you know she was a stay-at-home mom it doesn't say anything about her working and frankly that's really not important the father fred was a bookie now a bookie is someone who works mainly in sporting events they put bets together, collect the money from both parties and handle the payout. Now the issue with that was, oh, Fred was a fraud. <laughs> Fred the fraud. I didn't do it on purpose. I'm just naturally this gifted. Fred was a fraud. He would often gamble, spend his little money, and you know, he wasn't he wasn't the most honest with the bets and the transfer and the monies. Charles was a very reclusive child he was very much to himself he was the only child he was just extremely quiet now though he seemed a little bit delayed socially he was not by any stretch of the imagination unsmart okay by the time he graduated college he spoke seven languages he earned a bachelor of science degree in nuclear physics at the University of Houston and during during World War II he was a pilot in the US Navy and he also worked in the um, Office of Naval Intelligence he was very fancy after the war he went on to be a seismologist for the Shell gas company he was there for eight years eight or nine years nine years and said that he was a very successful, very well-paid guy. Despite all of this success, in 1957, he abruptly quit his job without any explanation whatsoever and moved back into the house with his parents. Now, fast forward eight years later, he is still unemployed, still living with Fred and Edwina. The Rogers are alleged to have abused him as a child growing up and it was kind of extreme because little charles would not even communicate with them like directly even when he was an adult he would always communicate with them by slipping notes of paper underneath his door to them he never spoke directly to them even when he returned home as unemployed adults and now as charles's career took off further and further he was making all this money his parents, okay, the house that they're living in, it's not in the parents' name, it's in his name. He owns the house. He finds out that all this time they've been frauding him by taking out loans against the house and stealing large amounts of money from him, forging his name on deeds of land. Like it was just, he just found out they just been doing him grace, which I don't understand how that much amount of money just goes missing because I'm telling you, if I look at my account and five dollars, if it's all about five dollars, I'm gonna know. And somebody gonna have to answer. Now on June 23rd, 1965, two officers respond to a welfare check to the Rogers home because Edwina, her nephew, who she spoke with every other day, had not heard from her and she was not answering his phone calls. He alerted the police and so they decided, you know, okay, it's been about a, about a week, let us fall through. Now, upon entering the home, the police take a look around, everything is clean, nothing looks out of place. The only thing that they noted that was off was that there was food set at the dining table and it looked like nobody ever got a chance to get around to eating it other than that the house was clean nothing was disheveled nothing looked you know stolen it wasn't a big old space where you know like a tv or something was and was obviously taken from everything looked looked normal so right before they leave one of the officers decides let's look in the fridge 
see what's going on in there which he said he was just a you know a something told him to look in the fridge before they left but honestly i really think he was about to steal like some food or at the least bit probably some water because that's how people do nevertheless he opens up the fridge and freezer combo and the first thing he notices what appeared to be numerous cuts of washed meat gently stacked up on the shelves of the refrigerator and it was kind of odd because the meat wasn't like wrapped in plastic wrap or anything it was just just stacked up in there clean but still weird and he goes to close the refrigerator door when he notices two human heads in the vegetable bin the heads were those of course of fred and edwina rogers the married couple oh married couple and what first appeared to be this unwrapped washed cuts of meat on the shelves were actually their torso and limbs neatly chopped up and stacked in the fridge police later discovered the couple's organs in a nearby sewer they had been taken out chopped up and flushed down the toilet just disrespectful and then not all of the bodies were found the rest of the parts just were never found right an autopsy revealed that Fred had been killed by blows to the head with a claw hammer. Like, ee. his eyes had been gouged out and his genitalia removed. And as for Edwina, she had just been beaten and shot in the head execution style, which I mean, that's bad enough, you know, not to downplay it. That's horrible. Both were dragged to the master bathroom drains of their blood and then chopped into pieces and placed in the fridge and whoever had done this had apparently done a pretty good job they knew what they were doing because the medical examiner himself said that it was a very neat job like the, the, the dismembering the cuts or whatever now it was found that they had been killed three days prior on actual Father's Day and despite how gruesome the murders were the house was like immaculately clean like blood was discovered on the keyhole of the bedroom of Charles's door the 40 their now 43 year old son and honey he is nowhere to be found a nationwide manhood ensued for this man and they were not able to find him he was nowhere to be found he actually was never seen or heard from again so it's known that while working for shell as a seismologist homeboy had connections or like work dealings with cia cia members and so some people think that he was in the cia and that he was actually one of the men that assassinated jfk which is a whole thing like that's a whole nother rabbit hole that i just peeked down into and then i just hopped right over because i was like this this is something else but anywho he is somehow tied to the assassination of jfk and so people think that his parents were hearing you know too much information or that he suspected that they knew too much and they were recording his calls or you know bugging his calls and so he had to get rid of them for anything that they knew which is why you know the job was so neat or whatever but i don't think that's it it's also speculated that he was just just he acted out on the abuse that he endured as a kid and an adult and that he just wanted his parents out of here he had enough of the abuse and the financial, you know, abuse, and he decided to just kill them. Eddie had planned the murder for years and escaped to like Mexico or something, somewhere we would never really, you know, be picked out of the bunch. And that's what he did. Carried it out on Father's Day, I think because like the difference between how the father was killed and the mother really shows in my opinion, who was really the abuser here. I think that he probably had to hate for his mother for allowing it to happen, but clearly his father was like his main abuser. Girl, you just played me on camera. Uh, 
I mean, he cut off the genitalia. I feel like that just screams sexual abuse. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but why would he have done that? Because he was no, never able to be found, they ruled him legally dead in 1975. Oh! I just blinked and got my mascara all over the place. I wonder how that works though. Like if you're if you're declared legally dead and then one day you just pop about the blue. Like if I want to go off the grid, right? And they're like, we're bringing it. And then by some some way, I'm declared legally dead. And then I decide I miss pizza and tacos too much. I gotta go back and. Um, Technically, like, I don't think I broke a law. It's not breaking a law to go off the grid, right? If I just want to, and then I'm gone, and then I decide, no, I'm going to come back. I shouldn't, I don't think that's a crime. But if it is, but if it's not a crime, look at me, I got an attitude, but if it's not a crime, but if it's not a crime, and you're just declared legally dead and you come back, like, do they just be like, oh, no, and rip up the little certificate, and then they're like, reactivate your social security number and you back you back in action like how does that work yeah so nobody was ever you know charged for the murder they felt like Charles did it obviously and Charles ran off but what if Charles was a victim as well what if the murderer like knew the family and and they just took off with Charles like that's a possibility I think but it's probably not like I really think homeboy just did it and got out of there All right, so um, that's the end of the true crime video. And until I get my lashes on, I'm just going to ramble and tell y'all how, <laughs> how life been going for me these past couple weeks and why I've been missing. So I am taking care of my sister's dog, Poppy Chulo. And he is an obese English, English bulldog, but he's so sweet, right? And so anyway, um, I volunteered to meet her, pick up her dog because she is deploying. And so I'm just trying to adapt to having two dogs, two males at that. Like, <laughs> cause I feel like Blue thinks I'm his bitch, like literally. And sometimes I don't think he realizes that I'm mommy. Or maybe he into some little incesty shit and he's just weird like that. I don't know. But we not on the same wave exactly. And I know male dogs can be real territorial. Now they're both fixed though, but still. And so I don't know. I was a little worried about it, but we making it work, honey. Blue has this bear name, Bernicia. It's this woman. They have a great relationship. Let's just say they have a healthy sex life, right? So he humps his bear all the time. And I was a little afraid because I'm like, okay, what if Poppy, what if Poppy decides he wants a piece of that bear? Oh, what if Poppy wants a piece, right? And so Blue, I wonder if Blue's going to be like, nope, that's my bitch too. And then I just don't know. So, so one day I'm sitting on the couch and me and Poppy... You know, we kicking it. Blue comes out of nowhere because he likes to hump for an audience. He is not going to take his bear down the hall and hump and do his thing. No. If I'm having a conversation with somebody, he is going to drag that bear. Both of us in our peripheral are going to see this. And it's going to be him dragging the bear to the center to hump the bear. He likes the audience. So, typical day. Blue comes dragging his bear down the hall to have, you know, public sex. And... Poppy is looking. Poppy raises up off the couch like, looking like, what's going on? Like, what, what, that's what we do with her? So he watches Blue the whole time. Watches Blue hump this bear. Bump, 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 bump. Blue taps out, goes to sleep. Poppy go creeping over, and I'm just like, here he goes. Here we go. But Blue didn't mind. Like, he was like, all right, you got next. It's cool or whatever. So, you know, they're doing good. If Blue can share his woman. 
this should be all right all right that is it for this look thank you so i was gonna say so much Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed. And share my video. video. I hope you enjoyed the look. I hope you enjoyed this story. And until next time, peace.